Welcome to Healthy Living, Let's Get Real. I'm so pleased to have on the show today, Diane Ducharme Gardner, Master Yoga Instructor and owner of Yoga For You in Dedham, which is specifically a Bikram yoga studio. Diane, what is Bikram Yoga and how did you get into it? Oh, Bikram Yoga is an amazing series of 26 postures and two breathing exercises that anybody can do, beginner series. And I got into it a long time ago in the 80s. When I was in high school in the 70s, we had a little program in gym for a couple of weeks that they were showing us yoga postures and doing these yoga postures. And I cool. thought- Cool, in school. Yeah, I thought, I'm good at this. I wasn't good at sports. I didn't feel very coordinated. I could oh. stand still and breathe normal. I'm like, I can do this. So that planted the seed. And then in 1984, I found this incredible book that inspired Ooh, me. Oh, and she has it. This. Raquel Welch. This book no. I read, and it was the 26 postures and two breathing exercises, but this, which I didn't know anything about at the time, but I thought, I want to look like her. Everybody did it, you know, th at that time. Of course. Of so course. I was reading it, and I was trying to do it, and I was like, Phew, I really need a teacher. I wish I had a teacher. And in uh, 1985, I was at an open house for a wellness center, which there wasn't a lot of that in 1985. No. And I was with my mother, and she was like, oh, look, that's Madeline from church. I know her from church. Let's go talk to her. And Madeline was holding this book in her hand. And I said, how come you have that book in your hand? And she goes, oh, I'm going to teach this yoga. We're going to do a yoga program through the wellness place. And I said, sign me up. Oh, and wow. I went with my mother the first time. And it was in a little dance studio. Didn't have a lot of heat on, because at the time I didn't even know Bikram was a person or anything about heat or anything, but the floor was heated. It was a wooden floor. So when you went down on the floor series, it was like, oh, so oh. comfortable. And she taught that back in the 80s. You, do, you, you would do once a week for, for an hour and a half, sign up. It's like every Tuesday for six weeks. That's how you signed up for yoga in those days. Now you can go to any yoga studio any day, Yeah, there's several times a day. Classes all the time. Yeah. Lots of options, but that was it. So I said, "Let mom, come on, you come with me. And so we went to that first class. My mother drove. I was, it had a profound effect on me. I swear I was like somewhere up here. My feet weren't on, even on the ground when I came out of that class. And I said to my mother, "Wow, I want to do this for the rest of my life. And halfway home, we were about maybe six, six miles from home. Halfway home, I said, I want to teach it to other people too. It's that first class. Really? Yeah. That was 1985. 85. So that's and, how long I've been practicing. And you did. And you, you, you figured and out. I learned from her those postures. And then shortly after that session, she said, I don't want to do this anymore. Will you take over these classes? The teacher. So your friend yes. Madeline, who was teaching the classes. Yes. Said you take the, you and take, I take said, over the class. Okay, and then I thought about it and I go, oh my god, what have I gotten myself into? Like, but she is uh, one of those people that can see to the future. You know, we call them psychics or whatever. And I think at that point when she asked me that, I really believe that she saw my whole future and that she yeah. was handing me this gift. You yeah, know, I really think this series is a gift that we give ourselves every day when we practice. Mm -hmm because it helps us to feel more of who we really are. Let's talk a little bit yeah. more about it because Raquel Welch did not invent these 26 yoga no. postures. No. Who did? Vikram Chowdhury was okay. the inventor of this series mm -hmm. and she does give him a little mention in there that that's the yoga class that she went to and it had a profound effect on her life. It helped her to stay in the shape that she was to do her rigorous work. I mean, as an actress, wow. she, had a, she had a lot of, some of those roles were not easy and uh, she had to keep herself physically uh, fit for that. And yeah. that's what she chose to use was Bikram Yoga. So Bikram Chowdhury, like I said, when I first did this, I had no idea that he was a person or alive or I had no, no knowledge of that part of it, but I mm. knew that I wanted to do this yoga, these and postures. He developed this particular form yes. of yoga like way back when. He even had a book published about it before yes. hers. Do, yes. you, do you have that book? Yes. Yeah, so the, originally he, in 1978, he brought, he, he did this book here, um, Bikram's Beginning Yoga Class. And what this woman, um, Bonnie Reynolds did, 
She's the one that put this together. She basically took a lot of his classes, the conversation that he had in the classes, the lessons that he was teaching around the 26 and 2, and she captured his essence in this book. And so the 26 and really 2 being the 26 postures. Yeah. And two, two breathing exercises. Breathing exercises. Okay. Which is what's reflected in Raquel's book. But this was out before that. And then it got reissued. This is the one you can buy today on Amazon. Oh, yeah. Or We're going to show this. Yeah. So, Bikram's so this is Beginning the one. Yoga, yoga class, class by Bikram Chowdhury, who and, invented and this. Yes, yeah. because he took, uh, there was, yoga has thousands of postures, hundreds of variations on all these postures. And mm -hmm. he took postures that he thought would be able to work the whole system. In India, when he was learning yoga, they would prescribe it. You would go to the, the yogi and he would prescribe whatever your condition was, a certain set of exercises. Really? Then he would say to Bikram, go show them the exercises. And then he had several people that would help them to learn the exercises. And Bikram thought, why can't we come up with something that everyone can do that will cover a big wide variety of normal things that happen to people like I in our like western it. culture and so he says that a lot of times we're overstimulated mentally and understimulated physically so he wanted to make that yeah. mind body connection and he wanted to make sure that all the systems in the body reproductive digestion yeah. er, all the systems were being stimulated I and that's what he came it. up with yeah and let's talk about the class. So I yeah. went to I know. one of your classes. I'm so excited. I know, yeah. and, and I used to do um, Bikram yoga before yeah. Yeah. I got married and had kids. Yeah. Um, and, and I would even go to classes at like 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night, you right. know, because that's what in. you do when, yeah. you're, when you're single and you're working and you're like, I love this. So I was like addicted to it. It was, yeah. it's addictive. It's it addictive. is, it is. Um, but you can be addicted to worse things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a good thing to be addicted to. So, so I went and I was really struck by a number of things. One, a lot of the postures, and we're going to be demoing some at the end of the show, but a lot of the postures seem to me to be like the antidote to sitting at the computer, slouching over the steering wheel of the car, yeah. like sort of working on the exactly devices. Exactly perfect yeah. for what I need, you know, yeah. at the end of like a, what we a work all need. week. <laughs> yeah. I was very struck also by the range of ages represented in your very full class yeah. and the body types. I mean, everybody was in that class. Yeah. There was, there was skinny people, there was fat people. It, it's, it's all good because yeah. everybody's just there yeah. getting something out of it. Yeah. I was really struck by and that. And they're all there focusing on themselves, which yeah. is very valuable today because we have a tendency to blame the boss and blame the children and blame the spouse and blame the traffic. And like, you're just focusing on yourself. You're responsible for yourself. You're taking care of yourself. I mm. always like to think of it as a gift that you give yourself 90 minutes. Yeah. It's not like 10 minutes, 12 minutes, like everyone's trying to sell. Oh, you just do this for five minutes and you're good. Your abs, your core, whatever. No, you're giving, that's a gift that you, yeah. you make time for yourself to mm -hmm. do that class. So mm -hmm. very impressed that people do it routinely yeah. and keep coming. And over the years, I've been in business for 25 years. I've had yoga for you for wow. 25 years. And I've seen a lot of people go through a lot of things in life yeah. and handle them beautifully because they have that practice yeah and that's important to have that practice before something you know what hits the fan <laughs> exactly so having a regular it could be a yoga practice what we talked about it yeah. also could be just regular exercise routine yeah. walking, or regular swimming. meditation practice walking anything that yeah. helps to keep people focused and in the present yeah. moment and mindful anytime during the day helps yeah. them later absolutely so you it know pays, awful things happen pays back over but and you're over prepared again. to deal with it. Yeah. It's a tool yeah. to deal yeah. with life. Yeah. And it's a good tool. It works. And, mm -hmm. they've, and I'm very excited about these studies because for years we've been saying, oh, it helps this and it helps that and it helps this. And they're actually proving it now. And the reason why they're using Bikram Yoga is because it's standardized. Yeah. All the other yoga, you go and you don't know whether you're going to be working on shoulders or hips or it's, whatever. This there can is, be variability class to class. Yes. But Bikram standardized. Is the same. Mm -hmm. And they found it very useful in st to do it to study it yeah. as long as people come like three days a week and it's usually based on three days a week which is a really good maintenance program i say yeah. to people if you've got really bad chronic pain or disease or whatever six days a week one day off until you feel better maybe a mm -hmm. month two months three months and then you just maintain that two three times a week you can maintain that and so and anecdotally yes. you've talked about many cases of of um 
people, Things students, seen, your students yes. who come to your class yeah. who have chronic pain. Yes. So chronic pain is a, it's a big problem in our society, it and is. we tend we have tended to throw meds at pain yeah. and yeah. and prescriptions, and yeah. we're finding that that doesn't work, and it gets people into a really bad place. Um, well, because the yeah. medicine works for only a little bit of time usually, because the mm -hmm. body's different every day. So how do you how do you counteract that? Mm -hmm, it, you mm -hmm. can't just keep adjusting and adjusting and adjusting. And it, it doesn't adjusting. address the underlying issue. It doesn't. So and and we've seen I've seen studies and you've seen cases yeah. where people with severe osteoarthritis, even yes. joint replacements who don't want any more joint replacements, yes. and even inflammatory arthritis, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, have had significant improvements in yes. pain and functioning. Yeah with a regular yeah. Bikram yoga practice. And, yeah. and we have studies that actually show that that's, that's a thing, like that's significant. And I significant. think overall, that to reduce the inflammation in the body is a really important thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that inflammation has been, it's gotten worse because of all the processed food that yes. isn't giving you the nutrients. So yeah. you've got obese people in this world that are malnourished. That's and, a common and, thing. And this that's a true. common thing. So yeah. like th when they do the Bikram yoga, first of all, they hydrate more. Mm -hmm. I think hydration is a huge thing. Mm -hmm. People need to hydrate more. Um, and then they do, you know, they come in, they give that time to themselves every day and they do that and they flush out those toxins. Mm -hmm. And then that inflammatory response, you know, you, you learn how to deal with things better, less stress, mm -hmm. and then in inflammation starts to go down. So even with people with RA, which is you know, a lot that's of inflammation. A big, lot of inflammation. Yeah. Are feeling better. Yeah. And it was antidotal until they started studying these things and putting them down on paper. Yeah. So studies mm -hmm. do show so yeah. improvements in pain, osteoarthritis, yeah. rheumatoid arthritis, um, can be transformative for people who have yeah. been living a sedentary lifestyle. Yeah. So studies have shown that in obese adults who haven't moved at all, You're right? Like getting them into a regular yoga routine actually is transformative. It helps to put them into a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, increases self-efficacy, decreases stress, right. increases their health-related quality of life. So we do have studies that And it takes so that. little for somebody like that to get a lot of benefit. It just mm -hmm. takes so little. Just start moving yeah. however you have to do it. Yeah. I good. love it. I love it. So we have the science behind this. Yep. We have the, the story behind the movements, which I, it's fascinating. Like, who knew? Raquel Welch copying um, or putting Bikram uh, Chowdhury's uh, work out there. Yeah. Um, didn't, didn't he sue her? He did, so that book <laughs> yeah. is not available. You can't get that book anymore. I love it. I, you I know, it. like she, but it helped her to live a better quality of life. I, I don't know, I wonder if she's still doing it. Maybe. I would say she is, because this was set up, like she had her home studio, you know, people like that, they just build their studio for themselves and put on the heat and yeah. I say, the class is really impactful and powerful, but to do it silently by yourself is really amazing. And I always loved the notion of yoga because like running or you just, you know, you strap on a pair of shoes and go anytime, anywhere, right? That's good or walking, but this also, you just you put can. on a costume and you can do yoga in your own house. There's plenty of programs out there. There's lots of things on cable and uh, yeah. all kinds of yoga. All yoga is good yoga. You could use so, a book. Like yeah, the poses could. are demoed yes. in these books. Yes. And we can flash yes. a couple of, of pictures right, right here with yeah. some poses, Raquel Welch doing poses in the yeah. book you can't get anymore. And, yeah. And Bikram Chowdhury. Yeah. And, and, or you can take, you can yeah. take a class online or you can go on to yeah. On Demand. Um, yeah. on cable and if you have and your body and your mind you're ready for yoga or if you have some poses that you like that you have sort of memorized yeah. um, you could just do them at, at night at, at, at before oh, yeah. bed which oh, is a yeah. great way or to first unwind thing in the morning that a great way to wake up yeah and and it doesn't I, like I, I try to tell patients like I, I wouldn't try to have patients who are new to this commit to a 90-minute class although it's been transformative for you yeah, um, yeah. you know I, I try to tell patients just try a little bit yeah just but but do it every day yeah like even if yeah. you're just doing like five minutes just to have a routine of something that you do i'll end with a cute little story that years and years and years ago i went in the, the conference for the amputees where it was in boston at one of the main hotels in boston and they asked me to come and teach a yoga class as part of the offerings that they were giving oh. and i was in this room with people that didn't have arms and legs and it was an amazing experience one of the most amazing experiences of my life and there was a guy outside the room just kind of watching, looking, and, and he was in a wheelchair. And I opened the door and I go, what are you doing out there? And he goes, I can't do yoga. And I go, are you breathing? And he goes, yeah, why? And I go, you're doing yoga, get in here. And he called me six months later, he found me, tracked me down, and he said, I was 
pretty suicidal at that point because I was about to lose my feet from um, diabetes, complications from diabetes. He oh. says, now I'm in Europe touring about bringing people awareness about people with disabilities. He said, my whole life changed that day and I needed to tell you that. That is a beautiful One hour. story. One hour. And he did the yoga class. And he, I got him in there to do some yoga, whatever he could. That's why you just come in and do what you can. Yeah. And you're doing yoga just by breathing. And people can modify yeah, the absolutely. movements. They just try. Like, there's a posture, and maybe you can only do this much of it, and that's what you do until you can do this much, and then this much. It's mm -hmm. never about completing the posture. It's about doing safely as much as you can, Yeah. breathing normal, holding steady. Getting something out of it for you. That's what it's yeah. all about. And now we're gonna we're gonna demonstrate some yes. some moves that you felt might be useful for people to know I, about. Yeah. I'm, all right. I'm, I'm excited about that. I am too. Yeah. Let's let's do it. All right, Diane. I am excited about this, but you're the teacher, and so you tell me what to do. Okay. We need to warm up a little bit. Okay. Movement is so good for your body. It's like a big oil can. So let's start where we're all crunchy up in the neck. Let's just. Roll the head around. You can go back and forth in the back and then in the front, or you can go all the way. But you're going to hear some crunches. And don't be afraid. That's just... Uh, so the crunching is okay. Putting the oil in the, in the joint. Think about the joints back here. All the joints in your spine, right? We're trying to work all the joints of the spine, of the wrist, the elbow, the shoulder, and the ankle, the knee, and the hip. So lots going on there. We, we're going we're gonna to start with something where... In this country, anyway, a lot of hip replacements, a lot of knee replacements. So let's talk about that. Yeah. We used to have to squat to go to the bathroom, right? Yeah, traditionally. So, that's what they still do all around the world, right? Right. Tell me about that. You <laughs> discovered that recently. So I was on a medical mission to Sri Lanka a long time ago, and we were in some remote areas, and the toilets were basically a hole in the ground. And at first, we were all very shocked, like, oh, my God. I have a... But, you know, this is really how it's done and how it's been done for millennia. And you get used to it pretty quickly. Yeah, and this is how people traditionally would sit, like the fire was there yep. and you would eat in this you position. You would eat, you would go to the bathroom, and then look at what's happening with these joints. They're very well oiled, they're very well lubricated. This is actually exercise. Yes, And yes. if you were doing that all day long, yes. to picking, go to the bathroom, Picking up children, making cooking the food, That's going to right. the bathroom. So think about how lubricated those joints are. So we have something in Bikram Yoga called the awkward pose. It actually has three poses parts and it really works the legs and then the joints of the the legs and in the spine the vertebrae so okay the feet are six inches apart think about think about where your ball and socket <coughs> and the hip joint is and it's just the ankle joint is right below that so this would be a little too wide this is a little bit too close we want to just like a plumb line yeah and so we're going to just keep the feet flat bring the arms up Think about shoulder is relaxed, but you're also reaching forward. So you're engaging the muscles of the arms. Shoulder's not doing the work. The muscle's doing the work. And then exhale, stomach in, very slowly with your feet flat without changing your feet. Mm -hmm. Sit down. Push your hips back and sit into the chair. Imagine there's a chair there, right there. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now lift your chest up and bend your total spine backward bending. And you feel all the back muscles working. The stomach is in, so your core is working. Mm -hmm. And this is good for the joints of the ankle, the knee, and the hip. And then come back up. That's and a now, really good strengthening it, it exercise. Is. You can just work that. You don't want to go too low because then you can't access the back strength. And if you don't have that mobility yet, right you can be right here and just arch your upper body back. As long as you're arching your upper body back and you're pressuring in the hip joint, it's good for your knees, it's good for all the joints. And then when you come back up, you can come all the way up as high as you can on the ball of your foot. Ooh. And I'm, I'm holding onto the chair here, which I would recommend for people to do. Think about how you're contracting the muscles of the legs and just trying to stand up tall. Imagine I'm pulling your hair up towards the ceiling. I'm helping you to remember to stretch your spine up. And then you Ooh. sit down on the top of your toes. So again, Ooh. hips go back in the chair. So I'm on my, I'm on still on the ball of my feet yep. here. Yep. So hips go back in the chair. Beautiful. Okay. Hips back. And now lift your chest up, upper body back. So again, it doesn't matter how low you go, as long as all those joints are working. Okay. This so is, this is actually work. And you know what strikes me? You could do this anytime. Anywhere. Anywhere. And the muscles, you'll feel the burning already. Yeah. In the, in the legs. You could do this at work. Yeah. You or could you be at your desk. take a little break. Yeah. And you just take a break for your body and you work it. So 
First part, sit as low as you can with the ability to bring your upper body back. And then second part, again, just try to balance on the toes. You don't, don't rush this. Like even this right here, my thigh muscles are contracted, my heels are lifted, my spine is stretching. Like even just coming on the toes, you know we never do this. No. And yeah. your feet take all the brunt every day, right? Mm -hmm. So now the toes, think of it, the arches, the toes, the knees, the hips, and again, arch your upper body back so you get all the back muscles working and the core strength working. And that's balancing. Third part we don't do here is a little bit more complicated, but those two will really keep the core. Simple moves. Very simple. And hard. Not yeah. easy. Yeah. But beginners, be anybody can try it. Anybody can try, yes. Anybody can try. So now let's just stretch the whole back side of the body because what happens when we sit all the time? We're sitting, we're shortening everything. The sciatic nerve, the hamstring, everything behind here. Sitting in a chair is so bad for us. So all bad. the time, sitting, yeah. sitting, sitting, to get to the job, to work the job, to at home at night in front of the TV, mm -hmm. eating, everything, sitting, sitting, sitting. So very slowly coming down. Okay. Your feet are about 24 to, to 30 inches apart. It depends on, of course, how tall you are. Something comfortable where you can maintain this muscle contraction above the knee. Always think about keeping the kneecap pulled up. Mm -hmm. Think about people that start to lose the cartilage in the knee. Mm. Now, if you're pulling up on the muscle, you're actually creating a little space in that joint. So it's safe, ah. you know? And you're strengthening your and quad. And you're strengthening. Because what happens when you have a knee problem? They send you to PT, you have to strengthen the quad. So mm -hmm. we're doing that here. Then coming forward, you want to think about the chin being forward so you're stretching your spine and you can use your hands for support on your thighs. Because this is where, this is pretty much people's range of motion before they get into a big stretching program or, or yoga. And then eventually you touch your hands on the floor, but still keeping the thigh muscles contracted because yeah. what you're doing is when this is contracted, this is releasing. Ah. And so eventually, chin forward, breathe. You want to take some time and allow it to stretch as you contract this muscle. Automatically the back of the leg will, will release. And then slowly just bringing the elbows more down. Where, where is your range of motion before you go, oh, that's it, mm -hmm. right? That's it. So people and can just go as far as they want. Exactly. As far and as it they might can. be here, but here, because chin is forward, your spine is stretching, because the thigh muscles are contracted, the legs are stretching, and that is so good for the sciatic nerve, for the hamstring, for the back of the knee, and ultimately to strengthen um, around the knee. Because the knee has to have all the joints need to be supported, strength, mm -hmm. and flexible range yeah. of motion. That's a nice antidote to sitting. I like that. Yeah. That's and, you, a beautiful and like move. you said, you can just get off the chair. And do it. Yeah. It doesn't even look too funny if you share an office. No, exactly. Because what are you doing? I'm just, I'm basically, when you're here, by the time you get here, now you could even let gravity help you. You can bring your head down and just feel the traction. Feel that traction. Oh, yeah. Gravity's helping you. Gravity's working. So we want to use that leverage of gravity sometimes when we're a little bit upside Ooh. down there, right? So now blood went to the head because mm -hmm. you were all the way down. So one, stretching the spine this way, and then when you can come down enough to drop the head and let the head traction the rest of the spine. So that oh, yeah. is a really cool one for the whole back side of the body. Ooh, yeah. I feel better already. I know, because the blood. Yeah. The, it's the flushing of the blood, getting the blood to move. So you have to move your body mm -hmm. to move the blood. And the stretch. I know. The stretch is just so awesome. Good. And it's yeah. like two minutes, right? And, and we feel better already. Yeah. So now, first thing in the morning, if you have a problem with being regular, this is the best oh. one to do. How many of my patients need this? Okay, great. Okay, so actually, when you just lie like this, heels together, feet fall open, okay. arms on the towel, palms facing up, you're doing the hardest yoga ever. No. Because you have to be still and oh. focus and breathe. We are more like human doings, but we're supposed to be human beings. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so just be. This is the best thing ever. One of my yoga teachers wanted to get her sister into class, and she just bought her a yoga mat and told her, just do this one posture. <gasps> just lie like this. Yep. And she actually ended up coming to class after that, after about a month of this. So then now we're going to come up for a nice gentle spine twist. You're going to bring your left leg out and your right leg over, and sometimes depending on your level of 
flexibility or weight or whatever, you might even have to have the foot here. But it's okay. so good if you can cross over because now so you're you could, stretching you this. You can modify though like Yes, this. you can always do this if this is all you can do. This is, when you go over like this, you're doing more the IT band, which how many people come, oh. this is so tight. If you've ever it's gotten massage. Runner's, runner's problem, yeah. Yeah, and they go in there and it hurts because they're digging in there. And this is a nice gentle stretch for this IT band. And then you take, when the left leg is straight out, you take the left arm to hug yourself and you lift your chest up. So you bring the body into the leg and the leg into the body. So you, you really have some pressure here. And depending on how much weight you have, that, that can be a lot of pressure there. So, so you might have to modify like this. And then you would take the other arm around. And, okay. and then as much as you can to stretch up. And the chin goes from the left shoulder. Keep your chin low all the way to the right shoulder. Ooh. And try to look back as much as you can without really changing the position of your hips. In other words, mm. when the hips are on the floor comfortably like that, now the whole spine can twist. And of course, stretching up first, so it can be like this, doesn't matter whether it's here or here, it can be like that. Okay. And then again, coming in, like giving yourself a nice hug, arm around the back, and then and even hand on the floor is perfectly acceptable. And you take your chin from this side, right shoulder to left shoulder. So this is like the modification. Yep. So think. So yep. So turn your fingers away from you, so your palm very close to your hip. Yes. And then you can lift up and twist, but keep your chin low over the left shoulder. So now you're really getting that twist in the spinal muscles. Mm. And think about it. If the muscles, you're you're creating enough pressure on the muscle to activate the nerve around the spine. And that's what creates so much benefit in yoga. The muscles activating, putting pressure to activate the nerves. Now that when the nerves are stimulated, you know, the superhighway from the brain to all the way through, right? All the things that happen, all the stimulation of the nervous system. And that's what yoga does. It really works on the nervous system. Yeah, you have to think about the postures. You have to think about the balance. Your muscles are all engaged, trying to help balance. Yeah. Your balance system in your inner ear is like, ah, you know, it's yeah. awesome. This yeah. is incredible. Yeah. And just it. that little bit, it's only a few minutes. And yeah. there it is. You can do. Though those were simple, simple know, moves very simple. Anybody, that really anybody, anybody can, can do it. to the extent that they can do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and maybe make a little bit of progress every yeah. time. So um, the idea is to be a little bit uncomfortable, but breathing normal, move slowly in and out of the postures and eyes always open. Yeah. Eyes always open. So you stay in the present moment. When we close our eyes, we tend to go past or future. So eyes open, like in the yoga room, in the yoga class, yeah. eyes open, present moment. I like that. Excellent. Thank you so much.